Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Week Zero event in Manchester, checking in team number 125, Neutrons, coming out of Massachusetts. Fantastic team here today. We just saw them do traversal climb once again, so of course we'll be going into that. But on 125, I have Pat and Isaac, who are going to be detailing more about this robot. Of course, going through the full cargo journey, some cool sensors, all this and more coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. First Updates Now is supported by Kettering University. Over one third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades eight through 12 and located in the continental US scan the QR code and complete the form by January 31st, 2022 and receive more information about Kettering. So we're gonna start out on this uh, intake here. Talk to me about some of the design process, implementation, and uh, from like a rigidity structure, that sort of thing, everything that went to this intake, give me a good detail about it. Yeah, so the main thing with the intake was uh, uh, being impact resistant and um, able to bring in balls quick, which is why we use uh, a, a dead axle construction with um, metal 3D printed pulleys. Um, we have a separate roller here uh, that we're gonna planning on putting Velcro on to help bring in bouncing balls. We haven't set that up yet, but it is in the plan. Other than that, it's pretty simple. Uh, my guess is it's like a lot of intakes you'll see this year. So looking at from uh, the Velcro perspective, have you done like testing with it to see like what kind of difference that would make? Yeah, we did do a bunch of uh, testing, prototyping with Velcro, and we did see it uh, be able to pick up balls that were bouncing low pretty well uh, that we couldn't pick up normally. So you have the pneumatics, obviously, on this. Uh, when you look at a match and you're approaching it, do you typically keep the intake down the whole time, or are you only putting it down when you're looking to actually bring in we, Yeah, we uh, only cargo. put it down when we're about to uh, pick up a ball, and we retract it essentially immediately. Uh, the retraction of the intake is actually part of how we bring the balls in. Sure. Uh, this roller will physically push balls uh, into the this roller for our um, feeding system faster. Yeah. Let's talk more about that feeding system and the, the S-curve you have going on with that. We're starting to see more and more teams kind of approach that route uh, going that way. So uh, talk to me a little about uh, like when you're thinking about like, you know, compression, how you got to move that cargo in that way. What made you come up with this type of approach to go with? Yeah, so we really wanted to keep our robot low this year. Um, but another driving constraint is that we also wanted an open front of the robot so that we could potentially catch uh, cargo that bounces over the intake into our feeding system. So um, when we threw all of that geometry in CAD and connected the dots, sure. it was a curve, and that's what we made. Well, next up, we're going to talk about your shooter uh, coming in. Uh, you know, we're starting to see uh, teams kind of take two approaches to shooters in many cases, uh, either having the, the flywheels on the front and back and both powered. I've seen some teams do the double front as well, too. Uh, so talking about uh, some of the things that have gone in it, I'm curious to hear more about like what made you choose these type of wheels as well, too. Yeah, so we had really good success with these uh, wheels in 2020 and 2021. Um, we really like how light they are, but uh, and they also are still just as grippy as like a Fairlane wheel. Sure. So we like them mostly from a weight perspective um, over uh, Fairlane wheels, which is a more traditional shooter wheel. Um, the reason why we went with uh, two rollers is to reduce backspin. Uh, because the balls can roll up the side after yeah. they enter the goal. We've seen a lot of bounce outs today, um, right? One thing we really focused on was getting the, with our prototyping, was getting the right uh, like amount of energy into the shot. We found that if you uh, roast the ball through the shooter and it exits with a ton of energy, it's just going to bounce out of the goal. So we want to just barely skim in. Uh, and we found we've been able to pretty, do that pretty well. Uh, you have the adjustable hood uh, on the back here as well too. Are you finding that you are shooting from multiple locations or you kind of got a single sweet spot you look at? Yeah, so we're, we're capable of shooting anywhere from the side of the field up to right against the goal. And our, our software takes care of uh, all of that automatically with uh, our limelight. Well, that's a great segue to talk maybe a little bit more in the targeting. Uh, tell us a little about how 125 is approaching targeting for this season. Yeah, so, so long as the limelight has the goal in view, uh, our hood and our shooter are automatically going to adjust their RPMs to ensure that we can get the ball into the goal. Uh, 
we we do kind of we we are able to shoot from like like Pat said like anywhere from the side of the field up to the goal. Sure. Though we do kind of have like a sweet spot right around the edge of the tarmac. So we're going to go uh, up into your climber next. Obviously, it's been a big feature here at the Week Zero event. You're one of only a couple teams that we've seen do a traversal climb uh, so far. So talk to me a little bit more uh, of what's gone into it mechanically, and we'll talk about some of the software that's gone into it as well. Yeah, so the first thing, um, when we got the game, we, uh, we wanted to climb really fast. Um, and the way we initially saw as a way to speed up the process was to skip the second bar, yeah. because you can get a robot between those spaces. It's just hard. So. Uh, we had, you, you end up realizing you've got to get the the second bar almost to the bottom of your robot, uh, and that causes you to hang at a really weird angle. So then we added these uh, bars here that press up against the third bar to adjust our angle to allow our final set of hooks to clip on perfectly to the traversal bar. And then from a software wise, is there any sort of automation that goes into the, the climbing process that you're using? Yeah. So. Uh, when we're initially starting the climb, we pretty much just have a, a button set up to deploy the, ar the primary arms where we want them to be. Uh, in the future, we hope to completely automate the climb sure. so that once we set up the arms, drive up to the, the second bar, press a button, it's all doing it on its own. But right now, we have to stick to manual. So just to read it right here, give me a little bit more on uh, kind of what these bars do. We saw them come out a little bit. Yeah, so when these bars grab the the second bar and pull us all the way down. We're hanging at a really awkward angle yeah. that we couldn't reach the farthest bar. So these push up against the middle bar and force our robot to hang flat. And that brings our final hooks up to the uh, traversal bar. Well, you've already done traversal a couple times. Uh, we've seen a uh, three ball auto here so far. Any plans for anything past the three ball auto for this year's game? Yeah, so we plan on having a five ball auto. Sure. Uh, it's we're working on our consistency right now so obviously like little things like the way that the balls are positioned on the field and how we set up at the start of the match pretty much every every uh match at this week zero here has been like a little bit different like some balls where we get in on one match sure. next match we don't get them in uh, and then we're also working on our like human player ball we plan on like sliding it under the sliding the ball under the hanger and feeding into the intake of the robot. Uh, we're having trouble with the timing right now, but that's it's something zero, you gotta right? iron you out. Still, yeah. got, still got time to work on it, of course. I mean, what a fantastic machine, though, already at week zero, and we can't wait to see your first event coming up soon enough. So 125 Neutrons, thanks for taking time to show off this awesome machine, making great robots every year. I can't wait to see how you do this competition season. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades eight through 12 and located in the continental US scan the QR code and complete the form by the date on screen and receive more information about Kettering. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Thanks for watching. If you want to join us for future fun streams, be sure to click the follow button and turn on the notification bell to know when we're live. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. View archives and unique content at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.